Cairngorm the Macwomble the Terrible, to give him his full name, had come down from his home in Scotland to stay with his Womble cousins in their Wimbledon borough. He hadn't chosen a very good time for his visit, as the weather was cold and wet and windy. It reminds me of the Highlands, so it does, said the Macwomble. Yes, said Great Uncle Bulgaria, and I haven't seen a single human being on the common today. Yes, but they're a silly lot. They seem to think a spot of rain will make them melt. And that means, he went on rather grumpily, that means there'll be little or no rubbish for the young Wombles to tidy up. Eh, and mischief finds work for idle paws, said the Mac Womble, quoting an old Womble proverb. Yeah, they'll be up to all kinds of tricks. Uh, if I was in charge of this burrow, yes, will you not? snapped Great Uncle Bulgaria. I am. I, I shall go to my study and think of an answer to the problem. Uh, excuse me, Mac Womble. The Mac Womble's little round eyes twinkled, but he didn't say anything. He knew perfectly well that after the very good lunch Madame Cholet had given them, Great Uncle Bulgaria would soon be having a nice little nap. And as the Mac Womble loved to be in charge, he decided that he would see what he could do. So off he strode with his kilt swinging to the library. Wellington was sitting with his paws over his ears. He was trying to keep out the noise his friends were making as they played Blind Womble's bluff all over the borough at the tops of their voices. Spread in front of Wellington was a very large magazine full of coloured pictures. What have you there, young Wellington? asked the Macwomble. What? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, said Wellington. Oh, it's you, Macwomble. Yes, sorry. I say, isn't this a smashing magazine? Just look at... Yeah, it'll be English, no doubt, said the Macwomble, not sounding at all interested. Uh, oh, no, no, it's, uh, it, it's Scotch. Scottish, the Macwomble corrected him. Well, let me have a look. It's bound to be a grand wee paper in that case. Oh, oh, oh. oh you look at that, then. A picture of a mast pipe band. It almost makes me feel homesick. Oh, for the sound and the skirl of the pipes. Oh, for the... And then he stopped dead. Um, sorry, but, uh, oh, for the what? asked Wellington, after several seconds of silence. That's it said the Macwomble. We'll form the Wimbledon Mast Pipe Band. We'll make our own bagpipes and I'll teach you all how to play them. Call all the other young Wombles and tell them to report to me in the workshop immediately. Now don't just sit there with your wee eyes popping. There's work to be done. As everyone else had got very bored just playing games, they all arrived in the workshop in double quick time and there they found the Macwomble talking to Tobermory. You want to do what? asked Tobermory. Oh, Womble, how many times do I have to tell you we want some pieces of wee rubbish which we can make into grand, great Scottish bagpipes, replied the Mac Womble, thumping his paw on the work table. Yeah, well, I don't know, I'm sure, said Tobermory. Does great uncle Bulgaria know about his plan? No, 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 it'll be a grand surprise for him. Yes, I bet it will, said Tobermory. Yeah, well, you'd better try the little storeroom third on the left. That's full of bits of piping and plastic bags and that. But once you've made your bagpipes, don't you start playing them in there. The noise, I mean, I mean, the, the music put me off my work. It will trouble you no further, said the Mac Womble, in a very grand manner. Band, forward march, left, right, left, right. And Toby Mori watched them out of sight and then tapped the barometer. The needle stayed firmly at wild and stormy, and Toby Mori shook his head and went <coughs> and returned to his job of making new shelves for the kitchen. The Macwomble was as good as his word. A great deal of sawing and hammering and sometimes cries of Ouch! That was my poor bungo! And look out, Orinoco, you nearly put that pipe in my eye! were heard faintly in the background, but apart from that, the burrow was strangely peaceful. The next morning, the Wimbledon pipe band marched out on the deserted, wet and windy common. It wasn't really a very big band, as it only had six players, Orinoco, Tomsk, Wellington, Bungo, Alderney, who sometimes helps in the kitchen, and Shancy, her best friend. As Shancy is very neat with her paws and is always top in Womble paw craft lessons, it wasn't surprising that she was the best at playing the bagpipes. 
Yon's a grand wee womble, said the Mac Womble, who was enjoying himself enormously. Play the opening bars again. Well, the wailing sound which Shancy produced from her homemade bagpipes was so unusual that every squirrel, hedgehog, mouse and bird ran for their lives. Grand, said the Mac Womble. Now the rest of you try it. One, two, three, play. Everybody else was enjoying themselves too as they puffed and blew and stamped their paws, for it's enormous fun making your own music. Grand, grand, said the Mac Womble at the end of the fourth day of band practice. Tomorrow we'll give our first concert. It'll be a great surprise for Great Uncle Bulgaria. It was. Great Uncle Bulgaria, Madame Cholet, Tobermory, and the very small Wombles from the Womble Garden were all very surprised indeed. You do realise, Madame Cholet, murmured Great Uncle Bulgaria, looking at his programme, that this is only the first concert and that there are another four to come. Oh, tiens, alors, said Madame Cholet, <coughs> said Tobermory, and he went over to the barometer and tapped it. Then they all went out onto the common to wait for the concert. A wailing sound grew louder and louder and louder until the pipe band came to a halt in front of Great Uncle Bulgaria. And no, said the Macwomble, a special tune which I myself have composed. It's called, for you'll take the large rubbish and I'll take the small rubbish, but I'll have a full tidy bag for ye. Band, one, two, three, march. During the next ten minutes, the Wimbledon pipe band played for all they were worth. Their homemade bagpipes squeaked and groaned and wailed and hooted, and they were completely unaware that their audience was not enjoying the concert quite as much as they were. However, as Wombles are the most polite creatures in the world, everybody clapped at the finish. Thank you, thank you, said the Mac Womble. Now, tomorrow night we shall play you a Wimbledon Highland jig, followed by... <coughs> said Tobermory. What a very good idea, but I'm afraid, Mac Womble, that uh, by then it won't be possible. You see, the weather is changing. It's uh, already stopped raining, and by tomorrow it will probably be warm, bright and sunny. Dear me, said Great Uncle Bulgaria, what a relief! Uh, I mean, what I mean, what I mean, what I mean, <laughs> what a great relief it will be for all those human beings who will start walking across the common and no doubt begin to drop litter in their usual untidy way, which in turn means that all you young Wombles will have a great deal of work to do. How sad it is to think that you won't have the time or the energy to give us another little concert. Yes, and thank Thank you so much, Mac Womble, for this evening's entertainment, and thank you to, to the Wimbledon Pipe Band. The band looked at each other a little bit sadly, and then at the Mac Womble, who drew himself up, shook his head, and then said, Just when I was getting my pipers into shape, too. Well, it can be helped, I suppose. Pipers! And he turned towards his band. Pipers will play the lament I taught you all the way back to the burrow. Are you ready? One, two, three, march. And the first and last Wimbledon pipe band, with the Mac Womble at their head, played their way, really quite well too, back to the Wimbledon burrow.